Hi, welcome to RoofSnap's uh, second live webinar. Um, I've got Katrina here with me. Hi guys, very happy to have you. And uh, we wanted to take the first couple minutes, um, you know, while people are joining the call, to uh, just jump in here on our website and uh, show you a little bit of a little bit of information about how all of our pricing works. Uh, so I want to start just by showing you the majority of our customers um, when they first sign up. Of course, we offer a free 14-day trial. So definitely try it for a couple weeks before you buy it. Uh, install the app. Uh, log in and uh, draw out some roofs and uh, use the estimating software as well. You can add as many users during your trial as you want so that multiple people at your company or organization can uh, try out the software. Uh, if it looks like it's going to be a good fit, then uh, we have two options uh, off the top, whether you want to go month to month or whether you want to go with an annual subscription. So our month to month is $99 per year. I'm sorry, our, our month to month, <laughs> Katrina. It's $99 per month per user. Per user. Uh, and so that's billed monthly, no contract, no commitment, and it's full functionality of the uh, software. Uh, so you can measure roofs and estimate and do contracts and create unlimited projects, 99 bucks per user. So as you can see, we have the annual plans down below where you can experience some big savings if you're going to have uh, multiple users in your organization. And I'm going to expand on each one of these because we do differentiate with regard to our annual plans, a sketch version and a max version. Uh, the max version, in a nutshell, is full functionality. The sketch version is just for measuring your roofs. As you can see when I zoom in here, you can get two users, sketch only, for $99 a month, when paid 12 months up front, or five users from $199 a month for the sketch only, or $269 for the max, and 10 users at $299 for the sketch only, or $399 for the month. And what that actually does, if you look at it, for 10 users, is it brings it down to $39.90 per user per month. So that's a big savings if you're a larger organization with lots of users. Functionality, if you go to our website, you can see that uh, Sketch uh, includes the measurements, blueprint takeoffs, photos and notes, uh, which will appear on the measurement report, the detailed measurement report that you can generate, along with your uh, custom logo from your company on all your documents. The Max version uh, includes the estimating syst system, good, better, best estimating, um, custom uh, <clears throat> contracts that can be digitally signed, uh, your material order sheet which is auto-generated and can be then emailed directly to your supplier, expense reporting and job profitability, labor cost reporting, uh, and then of course being able to create and sign your pre-start checklists. Now additionally, we have a new service. It's called SketchOS, our sketch ordering service. Uh, we will uh, draw the roofs for you here in-house and upload them as projects into your account. So we have the half snap and the full snap. The half snap is all the lines uh, of the perimeter drawn uh, with the predominant pitch, and that's gonna give you squares. And the half snap, regardless of size, is only $9. <laughs> the full snap is uh, more like your detailed measurement report, uh, but again, we don't, email you reports, we actually upload the drawing into your account so that you can use it for estimating or generate your own measurement report right from the app. We label all the lines and put in on all the pitch values and the pricing is subject to the final square count of the roof. Anything over 80 square, give us a call and we'll give you a custom price. All right, well, Katrina, yeah. why don't you pop over into uh, roof snap? And, oh, go ahead. Sorry, just to, uh, just to reiterate, uh, of course, this is our pricing page on the website, um, but as Jason mentioned before, we do have a free 14-day trial. So if you haven't had the chance already to uh, get your hands on the app and kind of play around with it, uh, we do encourage you to sign up for that 14-day trial and uh, see if it's something that makes sense for you. Great. 
So I'm going to go uh, straight into the app here. And, uh, you know what? Before you start, it's always good, at least in my opinion, to uh, put a face to a name. Ah, very true. <laughs> you can see our lovely faces So at this point. let's stop screen sharing for a second. So I'm Jason. I'm Katrina. And uh, we're happy to uh, put together these demos and trainings for you here uh, at RoofSnap. Uh, we'll be doing these uh, multiple times a week. We'll touch on various different topics. Um, we'll typically run a half hour, maybe 45 minutes. Uh, we'll do some more in-depth webinars as well that'll go the full hour uh, and really dive into some of the specific uh, details of all the different functionality. Uh, just look at uh, some of our other YouTube videos that we've recorded. Uh, you'll see in the description what we've covered. And uh, of course, we welcome you to uh, watch any of them that you feel uh, will help you learn how to use the software. Absolutely. Uh, it's cold here in Ohio, <laughs> so we're all bundled up. But uh, uh, we'll go ahead now and bring the screen back up and uh, and show you how to draw a roof in a roof snap. Sounds good. All right. And I did it in four clicks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So here's the uh, home page of the app. And uh, there are a couple of different ways that you can start a project using RoofSnap. Um, as you can see, we've got a, a tile here called Project Map. So let's say you are on site and wanting to pull up some quick measurements. Uh, if you're in the, uh, in the driveway or, or right there nearby, you can touch on this Project Map, and that's gonna pull in your Google location. Um, so it'll bring you right where you are, and you can drop a pin just by pressing and holding uh, on the property and create a project this way. This will import the address and the information for you. Um, and then of course you can customize that with the customer name and, and things like that as you go on. Um, another nice thing about the project map is you can see geographically where all of your uh, projects live. So if you've done, um, for instance, a, uh, a lot of work in a neighborhood, you can kind of hop in this way and hop into one of these projects that, uh, that you might need to get into. I'm gonna go back home here, and uh, I'm gonna start a project by uh, doing something off-site. So I'm gonna hit this Start New Project green tile, and um, I have a couple different offices with some different materials and pricing, so I'm gonna choose the right one. And Katrina, so this uh, method of going to um, start new project and putting in the address is convenient when you are um, sketching the house maybe the night before you have an appointment um, where you're not on site yet. Uh, you're going to draw it as best as you can from you know, all of the available imagery and, and then take it with you when you go on your appointment um, and, uh, and make any changes once you do your on-site inspection. It's kind of the nice thing about having these measurements in your hand. Uh, if there's something you need to add or delete when you uh, get on site, you have total control uh, over your measurements. All right, so I put in a, an address here. Of course, I can fill in any customer uh, specific information, uh, billing information, and insurance details if that applies. Uh, and then just press done here. And I typically just like to move down the list here. So we're currently in the details screen and I'm gonna hop into the roof snap and see what kind of imagery we have for this location. So um, there's always a change map uh, function that'll pop up for you, this little menu here where you can kind of scroll through and see the different imagery available to you. Uh, if you tap anywhere outside of that map, uh, this pin is gonna stay on the roof. So in a highly residential area like this one, I like to make sure I know exactly which house I'm, uh, I'm coming up on here. So keep my pin on the property. And the default imagery in RoofSnap is going to be Google Satellite. Um, so that'll always be the first one you see. And then of course we can go into the change map menu and see what other imagery we have available. Uh, the Google Hybrid, will put the street names on the street for you. It's down at the very bottom here, but you can see um, the street name populated. Uh, same Google satellite imagery. Uh, and the Apple flyover is a 3D imagery source. Where this is available, you kind of get a, a, a 3D environment. Uh, and sometimes this can be a really great higher resolution uh, 
image to, to work with. You can't zoom in as far as you can uh, with the Google imagery, but, uh, but don't well, worry. You can always pan and zoom when you get to the drawing screen. Absolutely. Once you've snapped the image, then you'll be able to zoom much further in on this, uh, and, and it'll, it'll frequently look better than the Google image. Mm -hmm. There's another imagery source I want to show you. Uh, we've got some third-party uh, partners called Nearmap that uh, provide aerial imagery in uh, most urban areas. And as you can see, they typically fly uh, multiple times. So you can scroll through and see what has the best resolution, the least amount of uh, tree coverage, and shadows on the roof. So you can hop through and see which one is going to be the best for you. And as you guys can see, the resolution of near map is uh, it's unparalleled. Uh, nothing compares uh, to, to the quality that you get from near map. Um, of course, the only thing that would be even higher resolution uh, is if you have one of those uh, uh, one of those drones, like a Phantom um, from DJI or something like that. Um, we do have the the ability to import an image from a drone. Uh, as Katrina will show you, there is an import button in the upper left-hand corner here. Um, so if you are using a drone image and you've saved it to your photos library, you can import that image and draw the roof uh, in pretty much the same way she's going to show you from this near map image here. Absolutely. And uh, I always like to make sure I use these uh, little crosshairs to make sure my uh, roof is aligned pretty straight and centered here. Uh, make sure you zoom all the way out uh, and get the, the best orientation uh, because once you hit this snap and start drawing, you are locked into this orientation. This is the view in which uh, we're going to draw from. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I feel pretty good about this uh, April 15th uh, view in near map. So I'm going to hit this snap and start drawing and lock this image in. Now, Katrina, when you're drawing a roof and you're not in the demo environment here as, as we're showing uh, you know, potential customers, uh, how long does it typically take you for a roof this size to um, select it and level it and then draw everything out and, and, and go through the whole process here? I would say for a roof like this, uh, maybe about three, maybe five minutes. Okay. All right, so as you can see, we can zoom in uh, and out as we need to in the drawing screen. Uh, there are a couple things I want to show you uh, in here that's going to be really helpful for doing this stuff uh, off-site. So again, as Jason mentioned, um, if you are drawing these things out the night before or prior to going on site, uh, there's a couple different supplementary uh, imagery sources that are going to help you gauge kind of what's going on. Um, so on the top here, you're going to see some directional images. These are pulled in from Bing. Um, so we can see the north aspect and kind of get a sense of um, almost like a, what would you call that, a bird's eye view angle? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, you're going to be looking for bay windows here, uh, any ears or wings on the building that you wouldn't be able to see from the top down. So that way, when you draw it, you can um, make sure you're, you're just catching all of those little types of uh, facets that you would have trouble seeing from overhead. Absolutely. There's a few <clears throat> more imagery sources uh, down here on the bottom that are very helpful. Uh, this map down here is uh, actually the 3D flyover, the Apple uh, flyover. So that's that 3D environment. When we look at it in this view, it's much more interactive. We can uh, sort of zoom around, or excuse me, sort of uh, pan around the house um, doing the motion that Katrina's doing. Um, we can zoom in on it, of course, and, uh, and see some of the more specific details. Um, when you really zoom in on that image, of course, uh, because it is 3D image that's been stitched together, it, uh, it's not super, super sharp, but um, it'll definitely help you find some of those details. And the other great thing about this uh, imagery source <coughs> is Excuse me. when I line up the ridge pretty close on to me, and I've, I've toggled this to more of a bird's eye view here, uh, lining it up with that crosshair, I'm going to press on this uh, magnifying button here and pull in a pitch tool by pressing on this protractor icon.
And now I can gauge pitch by lining this up with the rakes here. How about that? Let's say 712? I think so. Yep. So you follow the lines down to the outside here, and you can see that this is a 712 on that particular um, gable. And I can, of course, line up this next one, this lower level. Do the same, magnify it in, and pull in my pitch tool. We all know what that's going to be. <laughs> You look at enough of these, and uh, of course, eventually you begin to see, you know what? I think actually it's somewhere in between a four and a five, so we would want to round up to five. Yep. I was going to say it was a four. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, let's, uh, let's start drawing here. Um, as I draw, you'll, you'll see me um, kind of toggle between this pan and zoom and the draw function. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I typically like to uh, hop over to this draw tool. Uh, I like to draw the uh, second story, or the top plane of the roof here uh, first. And that way I can draw in uh, any bottom stories and flashing, uh, you know, my step and wall and, and overhangs uh, pretty easily that way. Um, so I would recommend starting off that way. Uh, and you can see I've got these cursor tails here by my cursor. Uh, and these are going to help me draw my lines nice and straight. Uh, you can start anywhere that you want to. There's no, um, no rule on that. But it is a two-finger process. So I've got, I'm right-handed. I've got my right finger on the screen. And uh, to start my line, I'm going to tap the screen with my left finger. And I'm keeping my right finger on the screen as I draw out this line. Uh, and when I want to stop here where the rake meets the ridge, I'm going to tap the screen one more time and continue drawing the second rake. Uh, this allows me to separate my rakes out uh, and ensure that I can close in this first facet when I draw this ridge. And when I get very close to this point here, my cursor is going to grab it and turn a big bright red color, and I know that I've closed in this first facet. And in fact, as I'm drawing these things out, I'll typically uh, go down to the facets button here in the bottom middle and just make sure that I'm closing in all of my areas. You want to see them highlighted in blue? Uh, and a highlighted uh, in blue facet means it's been drawn correctly on all sides. So as Katrina draws, <clears throat> Uh, and she'll speed up a little bit here, but uh, but not too not too super fast because she wants to you know try to be as accurate as she can um, as she draws. And if I go uh, too fast or I get a little uh, get a little trigger happy here, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I can always go back and correct anything that I need to. So I can grab this point just by hovering over the point and come back and really straighten that out so my line is nice and straight, nice, nice and even. So when she puts her point on a previous uh, like cross section there, actually I'll wait until she, uh, till she refines this section, but you can start drawing a new line <clears throat> from any point uh, where, where a line has started or where a line has stopped. So she touches right there at the bottom of that valley um, and then drags her finger up and draws the line and then taps one last time to close it in. All right. Looking good. So uh, I want to take <clears throat> one more look uh, at another uh, secondary imagery source here to kind of help me see what's going on in the front. Um, so I'm going to go to the Google Street View. It's this little guy down here in the bottom right corner. I'm going to tap on him, and that's going to give me the street view of this location. So again, I can kind of see, um, you know, some different uh, different things going on here, get a better sense of, of what I'm drawing. Uh, the other nice thing about the street view is when you get nice and uh, right in front of that gable, kind of like you're looking at it literally from the street uh, here. Again, I can press on this little uh, protractor tool on the top and pull in a pitch tool. This one I can make bigger or smaller and move around and get a sense of 
what that pitch is going to be on this front gable here. Looks like a seven to Looks me. Looks like a seven to me too. <laughs> All right, get out of here by uh, pressing on that minus and X button here. All right. So now I'm going to draw this uh, lower section here. And, and you'll, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you'll notice she's uh, you know she's drawing that rake and then to that E, but she's not connecting to any of the two-story uh, facets of the roof. Uh, this allows her to go past those lines and draw the overhang. So she comes in that ridge, she's going to come down that step wall, uh, and then she'll be able to come over along that uh, roof-to-wall flashing, which uh, some of you may refer to as apron. And you can be as picky with uh, your measurements as you want. You can draw it real slow or you can draw it in real fast. You know, the more careful you are and the more uh, conscientious you are, of course, the more accurate your measurements will be. And again, if you draw this stuff out pretty quickly and need to go back and make any adjustments, mm -hmm. uh, you can do that as well. Yep. All right, so I'm going to draw this rake down here. Uh, there's this little bit of eave here that comes up the valley. And I'm going to, again, toggle back and forth, go to my pan and zoom to draw in this little bit of overhang. And connect it here. All right. So last but not least, got this little section here, meets the wall, steps up here, turns to wall, and then again meets the step. And I'm going to take one more look at my facets and make sure that I've really enclosed everything in here. All right. Now that double shading that we see where the lines are close together representing the overhangs. Um, that is accurately calculating the roof planes of the second story and any overhangs uh, covering any of the lower roof plates. So you're going to get the most accurate square count here for your estimates, um, taking into account these, you know, these overhangs. And you can draw these overhangs based on, um, well, based on how large they are, which you can verify during your on-site inspection. And uh, since we're here in the facets mode, uh, let me pull out this menu again. Um, as you can see, there's a, a few different values in here. And I want to make sure that I'm putting the correct pitch uh, on the correct facet. Uh, so we've got this little remove tool up here. I'm going to select that and tap on one of these zero values and figure out exactly which facet they are assigned to. This is really helpful for some of the more, um, you know, cut up roofs that you might do. You might have a lot of small facets very close together, so you can really figure out which one goes where. Cool. All right, Jason, do you happen to remember any of those pitch values? Um, seven on the front. I'm going to grab my seven. Oh, not that front. <laughs> <laughs> on these two here. Yep. Seven on the main, and um, were those also seven? I believe so. Okay. I remember that uh, these down here are four. Yes, those were four. How about the back-facing gable? What were those? Those also four? Um, you know, I don't think that I checked that one. All right, let's hop in and check that rear-facing gable real quick. Let's go into that flyover view. Spin it around here. And she puts that vertical line right up and down on the ridge. And that's how we know that we're going to get an accurate measurement by making sure it's lined up straight, the crosshairs, right where the rakes come, at the, come together at the ridge. All right, looking like it's going to be 412. Yep. All right, that's good. Hop back into my facets, grab the pitch. And assign those to four. All right, so let's take a look at uh, at this function down here, this uh, edges. Um, so this is where you can start labeling your lines. Uh, so for instance, if I tap on Eve, 
I have the Eve label, and I can tap on all the Eve lines to turn them into Eves. Uh, when I double click on the Eve label, I can now apply some sub labels like Ice and Water Shield, uh, Drip Edge Metal, uh, denoted as Eve Edge here in Roof Snap. Uh, I can even put gutters and gutter toppers on here. Uh, so, why don't we just put some edge metal on here? And you'll see when I tap on those eaves, it's going to uh, draw up a, a little eave uh, label here for me. So, I know that that drip edge is assigned to my eaves. So, we'll go around and do some labeling here. I'm going to tap on my rakes, and again, uh, we'll put some edge metal on my rakes as well. Uh-oh, have a case of the fat fingers here. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, it's not impossible to um, you know, tap the line nearby. So that pan and zoom button is really going to come in handy. Uh, she's going to go to the step and uh, put some step flashing and some ice guard there at the step walls while we're zoomed in. And I can get that step. Grab my wall. Adding the apron flashing and, and ice and water shield as well at the wall transition. And what these are going to do, adding these sub labels, are going to give you measurements for um, some of the materials that you might replace in some locations, but not in every location. Uh, ridge, vent, ridge vent is the best example <clears throat> because you might put ridge vent on some of the dominant ridges, but maybe you have some little short ridges that aren't going to get any vents uh, simply because there's no attic space beneath the ridge in certain locations. Or perhaps on a garage, if it's not uh, if it's not a heated space, uh, then you wouldn't need ridge, ridge vent. Uh, well, at least here in Ohio, <laughs> you wouldn't necessarily by code have to put it in on a non-heated space. <clears throat> but we recognize that uh, you know code and best practices are uh, uh, different all the way uh, you know throughout the country. Absolutely. All right, I've got one little section here on the bottom. Notice how the sublabels that she selected previously stay loaded when she reselects another line label. Um, just speeds things up. We uh, we don't want you to. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't want you to have to reselect those each time. All right. So I'm all labeled up, and all of my facets here are uh, uh, pitch included. Uh, there is one thing that, uh, that I'd like to just note here, uh, just as a best practice. Uh, the edges button is, as long as you're in the edges mode here, uh, this is where you can delete a line that maybe you've drawn, uh, you know, five lines ago and, uh, and you don't want to hit that undo and redo button, uh, you know, and erase half of your drawing. So as long as you're in the edges mode, you can tap and hold and delete any edge and then go back of course and draw that in now when you delete a line of a facet that's already been labeled with a pitch value when you redraw that line it's going to reset to a zero pitch so you'll have to pop back in as well and select the pitch once you've reclosed in that facet uh, by drawing that line all right. And last but not least, yeah. let's take a look at this. Put pin some inspection section. pins on there, yeah. Katrina. <laughs> I want to see some hail damage. <laughs> so do most of our customers. Don't we all? We're waiting for a big storm, right? <laughs> so if we go on site and uh, <clears throat> we do notice a damage area, we can actually grab a pin and drop it in the site uh, that has that damage uh, just by tapping on the roof. And then when you tap and hold on that pin, uh, you can choose an image uh, from your photos library, you can take a photo right there on site, and you can also edit uh, a note. So let's take a photo, uh, and we'll just use uh, the desk here. Looks like a barn beam. <laughs> oh wait, it's our conference table. Yes. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and then I can tap and hold and create a note as well. So here you can talk about the 10 by 10 swath or if there's a leak or uh, as Katrina will show you, you can put pins and notes on, uh, photos and notes on any pit. 
So I always like the chimney pin because it's a very common issue that leaks and it needs to be reflashed. And if you take a photo and pin a note on the chimney, you uh, <clears throat> excuse me. You uh, you can then assign notes and photos, which will show up on the documents we'll generate. Uh, very helpful for production to have this kind of information uh, when they go to produce the roof replacement. All right, and these are all completely customizable. So all of the pins in here and all of these accessories you can put in on your account uh, per what you offer, per your pricing uh, and labor charge and things like that. So uh, the app will, will calculate all of this stuff for you based on the pins that you drop here on the roof. We'll put, of course, a spray paint and a sealant on there as well. I think that's good enough for, for the show and tell section. Here. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, let's tap on done. We're all labeled up and uh, everything's good to go here. So we're going to save everything in the roof snap by tapping on that done button. And at any point that you need to leave a project, you can always press done and hop back into the roof snap. So this is something that we built. Uh, yeah, this is pretty recent. We came up with this uh, suggested shingle cutting waste calculator. Uh, it auto calculates the roof based on the complexity, uh, the waste based on the complexity of the roof, incorporating values uh, depending on how much valley, hip, rake, and step wall there is, uh, with respect to how much material, um, how how large the roof is, and uh, and its overall complexity. It's very similar uh, and consistent with what an insurance adjuster might use with Xactimate's auto calculator. Um, now, granted, you may be able to uh, negotiate a higher waste percentage, uh, but what this number is really telling you for production purposes is how much waste you're going to need to install this roof. So in a retail environment, this is ideal uh, because 10%, as many of you know, is not always accurate. Uh, sometimes you can... Uh, you can put, place yourself right out of the job if you uh, put 10% on it. Uh, an easy up and over gable roof with 60 foot eaves, uh, you might find that you only need uh, you know, two, 3% waste when you have a lot of long straight runs with no valleys or hips. Uh, so use this at your discretion, but we're gonna go ahead and tap on the yes button and immediately go from the roof snap down to the next tab into measurements and you'll see the 11.6% waste factor is here. Uh, but Katrina, go ahead and, and change that to, uh, just round it up to 12. Uh, and you'll see there, you can then go ahead and adjust that waste percentage as you see fit. In the measurements view, uh, of course, you can see all of your, uh, your measurements appear here. Uh, you can also, from this view, export your measurements as a CSV file. So if you've got uh, uh, a program that can support a CSV file. Like Aculinx uh, or any other CRM or estimating platform, you can upload this into. Uh, I hear, uh, I haven't tested it myself, but I hear um, QuickBooks can import a CSV file. If you'd like to see it in the PDF version, let's hop down to Documents and generate a sketch report. And this is going to pull in all the information that we just laid out in the roof snap, including our pins with our attached notes and photos, uh, and, and put this into a nice uh, PDF report for us. Now, this can be customized uh, by setting up your account to include your company logo. So you can imagine this report with your company logo right here at the top, along with your address information and, uh, and detail. You get that nice overview image, your directional images. You've got your pitch breakdown here. And your measurements both in line form and in uh, category, category view. view. Yep, so it's going to uh, add up how much uh, you know, ice and water shield you need based on all the places that you labeled it on the roof. Uh, you know, that is, of course, assuming a 36-inch uh, installation. Um, your ridge vent and your rake and your eave, it's totaling all those up for you. And for this roof, we came, uh, came to 25.67 square at a 12% waste factor on that roof. Now, Katrina's going to keep scrolling because there's more information below the measurements. Breakdown by area. 
area per facet that is, and then the location of all the pins that we placed onto the roof. Uh, this is a, this is great to use uh, if you're going to use it as an inspection document to give to insurance adjusters. Uh, I want to show you here that photo that Katrina took. Uh, both of those, wait, two photos, one photo. I just took one photo. Oh, I and two notes. notes. Got it. So photos that she pinned on that hail damage um, is showing up right on this document. So some of our customers use this. Uh, for very extensive, you know, they'll put 50, 60 photos in here and, and use it as an inspection report for uh, residential or commercial properties. And then, of course, any document that you generate in RoofSnap, um, you can tap on the share button and email this, put it into a company Dropbox, send it to your wireless printer. Yeah, Google Drive, um, open it in PDF Expert if you want to merge it with other documents for a presentation. Um, all that kind of stuff. And those are how you uh, generate estimates. So Measurements. <laughs> I'm sorry. Man, it's late. So we're doing our first 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern time because, of course, we're on East Coast time. And uh, we definitely want to have these live demos available for our California customers, uh, Idaho, Washington, and on and on and on. We have a lot of West Coast customers who wanted to uh, hop in on some of these. Um, <clears throat> we are frequently at home uh, at this point. <laughs> uh, but, but the reason I said uh, estimates, of course, I've got it on my mind, is uh, I'm going to hop in real quick. I'm not going to go into the high-level detail that I did in the, in the webinar that we recorded yesterday. So if you want real high-level detail on generating an estimate, uh, watch the video, the second half, the last 30 minutes or so, the video that we made yesterday. Uh, it's on our YouTube page. Uh, you should be able to find it pretty easily. Uh, but let me hop here into specifications. The pins that Katrina put on the roof, they're already in here. Uh, they have prices. Uh, these are just demo prices that we're using here in this sample office. But what I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to go in and I'm going to add some templates that we've created. Again, all very fake prices, and I'm going to always pick different ones each time we do these demos. Uh, but I'll start with uh, the GAF Royal Sovereign on the good. <clears throat> And what that has done is it's loaded in a list of products that I have assigned to that template based on you know, commonly installed materials that you need when you're replacing a roof. Uh, now I'm going to hop back in and try to keep things even here. So let's go with, um, what do you think in here, Katrina? We need the better. Mm -hmm. So certainty landmark on the better? Yeah. Now certainly, uh, you know, different, different roofers, different contractors prefer different manufacturers. Uh, so we're just we're just not going to play any favorites tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the best is is not the best by any means. Tomorrow we'll make a different best, uh, and we'll pick for right now the um, uh, Owens Corning Storm IR. So now we have GAF Certainty and Owens Corning in here for the moment. Uh, three different prices, and we can build an estimate with all three prices. Real quick, though, let's just say the customer has uh, been leaning towards the certainty landmark, so I'm going to tap on that. And it's always going to remind me to pick a color. All of the colors of all these different products are already preloaded here into RoofSnap, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and you'll see this little, this little uh, I button right here. I'm going to tap on that because we all know a little negotiation is always required to close the deal. Uh, so we're going to add a custom line item, and let's say you and the customer have agreed to uh, uh, maybe a coupon or a discount or call it whatever you like, and we're going to do a subtraction of $500. And, and that might be too generous for some, but uh, you know I'm feeling generous tonight. <laughs> and I'll hit the Save button. That's going to reduce my price down to $9,093.61. And you can use these custom line items to uh, manipulate your final price, uh, whether you need to add drops or whether you need to add markups, depending on uh, you know, the situation. So I'm good. I'm going to leave the uh, certainty landmark highlighted, but Katrina's going to make me pick a color on the best real quick. And then we're going to go right back to the certainty. Thank you, Katrina. You're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and leave that one highlighted because this is, what, this is the, the one we want to show up on the contract. Going down to documents here, generate a new estimate. Oh, I think I did it too fast. Uh, let me try that again. <laughs> there we go. Estimate PDF. Let's open that up. 
No, we opened it up too fast. I've had glitchy all day. Um, <laughs> my internet has been going in and out. So there we go. We have a couple revisions. There we go. We have the good, better, best estimate here. Uh, all the different colors are in each one. The prices, the descriptions, and you'll see we have very detailed descriptions, square count and dollar per line item. Chances are some of you won't want that much detail. And the good news is we can hide these line item prices and these line item quantities and just have the descriptions. You don't have to share all that information with your homeowners, uh, depending on your preference there. Two-page document, quick and easy estimate to give to the customer. It can be shared every document. And jumping back out, let's go down to the contract and capture a signature. So if the homeowner's ready to buy, we're gonna tap on that. And this is gonna generate a document that can be signed by the homeowner. Looks a little different than the final version, but all of the terms and conditions a contract language can be modified when you set up your account, and we'll show you how to do all of that for free. At ReefSnap, the training is always free. Always free. At least for now. <laughs> <laughs> so give it a little signature from the customer. Hit the Save button. Uh, and this is going to generate a PDF version of this document with that signature embedded right in, uh, right in the bottom of the document with the date stamp. Tap on documents to come back to the list of documents where you can then open and view the contract. The shingle that we selected, a nice picture with the color option selected, um, all of the uh, specific details of the contract for the items that we've selected, contract language, signature, and of course our terms and conditions. Uh, you know, this is all just stuff we got off the internet here, so uh, whatever your terms are, we can customize it to fit and suit your needs. Now, there's quite a few other documents in here. I'll just briefly mention material orders. Well, they're ready to go. It's already going to calculate our materials for us based on the measurements that we drew in the roof snap. Uh, because the materials, when we customize those materials, we told the software, you know, how many linear feet of uh, how many linear feet we get per bundle of each brand of hip and ridge and things like that. So all that's pre-customized for you. You don't have to set those coverage ratios for things like shingles and ice and water shield and stuff like that. Our system already knows and it's going to put together a material order sheet for you automatically. Pre-start checklist, project summary report, labor summary report. Um, you know, all these documents pretty much have the same visual appearance. This project summary report is really going to come in handy for managers and admins. Uh, you'll see here that um, you, can <clears throat> you can see the contract price, your total labor and material, taxes, uh, which all are defined by setting up your office. And all of the setup happens not here on the app, but on roofsnap.com when you log into your account. So that's it for me uh, on the estimating and documents side. So I'm going to leave it here. Uh, Katrina, let's go ahead and flip back over to uh, the video camera. There we go. Right. And uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. And uh, we are going to be doing another live demo on Thursday. And that's going to go into a little more detail on the estimating side. No. That one's going to go into all the detail on setting up our office. Ah, that's right, on the account so side. So on the account side, we're going to take a look at um, going in and logging into RoofSnap, um, checking out your users, adding new users, customizing um, how your material pricing is configured and your labor pricing, tax, all that stuff. Uh, so join us if you can then. Uh, we'll, of course, record it and have it available, um, you know, very, very soon after right on our YouTube page. Uh, so uh, click uh, here. Oh, wait, we don't have any of that stuff. Uh, <laughs> click here to like click us. Click here to like us <laughs> and, uh, you know, join and follow. Um, no, we'll try to keep it fun. You know, this is estimating software. This is drawing roofs. Um, you know, it's a lot better than being up on a hot roof on a hot day. I'd say so, um, or being up on a cold roof on a cold day. Yeah, that's probably worse, because <laughs> yeah, it's cold today. It's 20 degrees outside, and there's snow in the parking lot. So, yeah. 
Um, any final thoughts here? You know, we talked about pricing in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Oh, call us. Yeah. We're please. always, well, we're frequently here. Yep. Um, 877-766-3762. 3762. I think it spells roof snap. 877 roof snap. Nice. Yep. Yep. So give us a call if you have any questions. Uh, sign up, uh, 14 day free trial on our homepage. There's so much information. We'd be glad to share anything with you. Uh, just give us a call. Thanks so much, guys. See ya. Bye bye.